This is the coolest stuff. Day three of dino treatment. Dosing silica. Let's see what's going on in here. What the? Regular LG that the cleanup crew can consume without dying. Hey, what's up, Reefers? first? If you're watching this video right now, chances are you're either a subscriber, which, thank you, or you're battling dinoflagellate right now and you're pulling out your hair. So right off the bat, I'm gonna tell you that this video is not gonna be like a how-to on beating dino per se, but I'll be sharing some resources on how to identify dino and how people are beating dino. For those of you who are just in a rush looking for information, right here, I'm gonna tell you what I'm doing with my tank. And in this video, I'm gonna go more in depth on each of the steps and the thought process behind it. The first thing you should do is to identify whether you have dinoflagellates, and if so, what kind kind it is because depending on the type of dinoflagellate that you got they have different treatments that's more appropriate in my particular case i got a 15 dollars microscope i identify mine to be the amphidelium there are different types of dinoflagellates and we're going to go a little bit deeper later on in this video regardless what type of dinoflagellate you have the first step is usually raise your nitrate raise your phosphate uh, dinoflagellate tend to come in when the nitrate and phosphate are zero when other algae cannot grow dinoflagellates they soup in and take over the real estate so with that in mind my first step is to bring nitrate all the way up to 10 ppm and phosphate all the way to 0.1 ppm from my understanding anything between like 10 to 20 ppm for nitrate is okay or even push it a little bit higher and the reason we want higher nitrate and phosphate is just so that other type of algae can come in and compete so most of the method agrees on raising nitrate and phosphate and where things start deviating is that there are a couple methods of eliminating dinoflagellates if you have the type of dinoflagellate that is free swimming in the water column uv serializers supposed to be a really nice way to remove dino from your tank. But if you're unfortunate like me, got the ones that kind of stay on the sand bed and do not go into the water column, UV tend not to be as effective. So if you're unfortunate like me, the method that I'm doing right now is actually dosing silica in order to induce a diatom bloom, which hopefully will outcompete the dino flagellant because they occupy a similar real estate in the reef tank, which is sand, rock, etc. While doing this, people also recommend dosing bacteria, whether it's the uh, Microbac 7, Microbac Clean or Fritz Turbo starts, but you want to get some bacteria in there as well to compete. And in order to boost diversity, people also recommended dosing phytoplankton. And this can come in the form of the algae bomb Ocean Magic that seems to be highly regarded, as well as the Reef Nutrition's Phytofeast Live. One thing I did read is that you do not want to disturb the sand bed while this is happening. So I have not touched my sand bed at all. I'm also considering doing a blackout, but at the moment the diatom is starting to come in, so I'm holding off on the blackout. But if things get a little bit more out of hand, I plan to go into a five days blackout and for that you may have to check out the next video and I'm reading conflicting report on whether blackout is actually effective uh, against the uh, amphibidinium's types. So standard treatment aside, some of the other stuff that I'm trying on the side includes using a one micron filter sock to try to catch some of the stuff. Maybe dino will kind of dies and float into the water column, may get caught in the filter sock and also I'm dosing a uh, reef enhanced. This is a product that was recommended to me by a friend and supposedly it will create marine snow and that will help with phytoplankton as well as um, just general life diversity in the tank. And at this point, at three weeks, I do see different types of algae coming in that includes the diatom that I'm eagerly awaiting for them to really just take over. Once they take over, I plan to drop some cleanup crew in there to keep the diatom under control, uh, which in turn, I'm hoping that it will push out the dinoflagellant. It looks promising, but it's gonna take a while. People are saying that it may take like five to six weeks for the whole thing to kind of like run this course. So that is where I'm sitting right now. If you wanna dive a little deeper with me, including some of the thoughts I have, some of the advice other people give me that I implement or not implement. Grab a cup of coffee, grab some popcorn, sit down, get yourself comfortable and enjoy the rest of this video. Flashback. Hey, what's up, first? Today's mission is to get some of these possibly dino flagellants out from the tank and put it under a microscope just so you can see exactly what we are dealing with. I'm hoping that these are brown diatom, which will be a lot easier to deal with. But if it is dino, that is okay. We beat dino twice or three times in the 45 gallon tank. We can do it again. And it seems like there are a lot more specific treatment for different types of dino this time around. And that's also more reason why I want to put these guys under the microscope to see exactly what it is. From what I understand, even the toy microscope should have enough magnification to see what's going on. I have in my hand a $20 pocket microscope that I got from Amazon. If you guys are interested in something like this, I'll have it in the video description link below as always. And these days I'm super careful in terms of uh, Getting my hands well into the tank. Kinda crazy how well this this little microscope works. Um, I'll try to download the footage. Well, I can just record it actually. Let me go to video mode. Dude, this is the coolest stuff. Uh, right now, I am what magnification? 
250x, 250 times magnification of this little 20 bucks pocket microscope. Hopefully it is uh, strong enough to kind of do a uh, ID on these guys. It looks like they are moving around or spinning. I take that as a sign of dinoflagellants, uh, but obviously I'm super new to this. So if you have a positive ID, please let me know, especially whether it is dino and if so, what type this is. Uh, and try to bring in the focus a little bit more. It just, I'm just blown away by, there's like a whole different world under the microscope. That is so cool, dude. All right, Reefers, now that we've identified that what we got in the tank is dinoflagellants, I started doing a little bit more research on that specific strand of dinoflagellants. It seems like it is slightly different because unlike some of the other types of dino, they actually do not really go into the water column. They hug really close to the sand. So for the most part, UV sterilizer is not that effective. But thankfully on Reef to Reef, there's a specific threat on this specific type of dinoflagellants on how to fight it. One of the methods that a lot of people to have success with is number one uh, the standard racing nitrate racing phosphate in the tank dinoflagellant really thrive in this like no nutrient level no algae is there so they kind of come in and just take over so that's number one number two dosing silicates and that's something that i've never tried before so i placed an order for the brightwell sponge excel but we'll talk about that a little bit later first i need to determine what is my nitrate and phosphate level in this tank so with that in mind I did a nitrate test. So the last time I did this test, I used the hand checker and it was over five ppm. So I did not get an accurate reading. It has been about roughly month, month and a half since and I haven't really done too much of it. So because last time it was over five ppm, uh, I decided to use the NIOS in case it went over five ppm again. So three is not terrible. I think I'm gonna try to raise it up to five. So I'll be dosing a little bit of nitrate. I don't wanna overdo it, but uh, we definitely want to raise this up a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and log it in the uh, Reef Trace app all right so it definitely dropped a little bit compared to last time i did it last time it was um uh, above five and the next thing i want to check is phosphate because that's another element that uh, really determine whether the dinoflagellant thrives or not so for phosphate i'm going to turn to my trusty hannah checker excellent kit phosphate in this case is 0 0.16 in terms of dosing nitrate there are many different products but i am using the uh, fish of hex no3 that i got a while back travis instruction calls to try for two milliliter per 25 gallon first and then we'll test uh, one day later to see where the nitrate is at i'm going to start with 12 milliliter um first and then we'll measure it tomorrow and we'll see where the nitrate sits at okay, there's different types of dinoflagellants and the type that i have is not to really toxic. I mean, it's still a little bit of toxins, but it's not as bad as some of the other types. The only crappy part about this type of dinoflagellant, besides the fact that um, they kind of suck, <laughs> is that they hug the sand really, really tight, meaning that they don't go into the water column, if at all. So UV sterilizer would probably not touch them at all, based on what I'm reading. Um, so for the most part, oh look, it's feeding time. So for the most part, um, I'm gonna do increased nitrate, increased phosphate, and start dosing a little bit of uh, silicates and also increase the biodiversity for overall health of the aquarium. I've seen posts where people claim that raising the aquarium's temperature to about 82, 83 also works in terms of um, fighting dinoflagellant. Uh, works for some people, did not work for a lot of people, and there are a lot of people kind of digging into why. Um, some people are saying that increasing the temperature kind of promote bacteria to multiply, and also it has something to do with the um, oxygen level in the water and obviously i'm not a smart guy i don't claim i understand what everybody's saying but what i do know is that it did not work for quite a few people so i feel like the most uh, tried and true method is still raising nitrate phosphate and dosing silicates so that's a road that's a road i'm going down and um just to increase the overall biodiversity of the tank as well to kind of bring the tank back into balance and hopefully I'll compete this uh, down with flagellants. What a way to close out 2020, but we can beat this, we can do it. A lot of people recommend dosing Microbac 7 for dino treatment. I have it in my hand, so this is the route that I'm gonna go with first. And someone who I think is knowledgeable also recommended using Fritz TurboStark, saying that under microscope, TurboStark seems to have a lot more active bacteria. Since I have the Microbac 7 in my hand already, and it is one of the uh, pretty commonly recommended bacteria in the bottle uh, people use to combat dino, I figure I'll give this a fair try first. What I find interesting is that there's actually a microbac clean that I did not know about that um, some people also recommend it, uh, namely from Brightwell. Again, MB7 is the one that's most people recommending, so 
So I'm gonna give it a try for us, it'll be a nice test. And based on some of the instructions that I read online, it seems like people will dose this according to the medium slash heavy load. Uh, we'll go daily dosing first, and then the second week it will be like every other day and it will taper off, I believe. And hopefully by then, uh, we'll have some competition for the dinoflagellin. Yo, what a salty shirt. <laughs> this t-shirt is thanks to my wife, Emily. She's the genius behind it. Actually, of course. Just, this means ha. A simplified version of salty. Figure uh, it's appropriate because, of course, with marine tank, salt, right? Salty. But the other meaning of ha also means preferred it in Cantonese. Perfect Ooh. for you. Perfect for all of us who are the inappropriate reefer, who may not do everything by the book, and sometimes we deem a little bit inappropriate, just a little bit. If you're interested in something like this, check it out in the uh, Teespring store. And you should see at the bottom uh, on the uh, merch rack. Turn, turn, keep turning, turn. <laughs> now back to our regular programming. <laughs> so uh, we made a oopsie right here. <laughs> the next morning. This day two, I'm gonna double check the um, nitrate reading. Looks like we moved the needle a little bit. Right now, it looks like we're measuring a five. So what I think I'm gonna do is gonna double up the recommended uh, dosage of the uh, Fisher Pax nitrate, and then we'll retest in 24 hours. Hey, hey, hey! You know what day it is? It's day three of Dino treatment, and interestingly, uh, Dino is still here, of course, but we actually see some cyanobacteria popping out like that. So we got a little batch right here and then we got a little batch mixed in among the dinos. And honestly, between cyanobacteria versus dinoflagellins, I would take cyano any day. And cyano is pretty easy to beat. Basically a dose or two of ChemiClean usually just take care of it. But I'm hoping that by bringing all the parameters back into check, as well as all the biological filtration and biodiversity back into the tank, the cyano is gonna naturally disappear as well. Maybe wishful thinking, but We'll see how it goes. It's the third day of dino and test kit gave to me what looks like 5 ppm of nitrate. We'll go for the gold and go triple the recommended amount and we'll see if it moves the needles a little bit more. I think today's like day five or six, I'm losing track of time. Looks like it's still sitting at five. It's like pinned at five, that's kind of odd. Should I start crushing the test kit? All right, so the other type of competition that people have recommended me trying is actually adding phytoplankton in order to try to outcompete the dinoflagellant. And these have to be live phytoplankton in order to be effective, not the dead stuff. To be 100% transparent with you guys, some people reached out and actually recommended the Algae Bond Ocean Magic version of the live phytoplankton. It includes different types of phytoplankton and then it also claims to battle dinoflagellant and noise and algae. But in my case, because I have a relationship with Reef Nutrition, Chad in particular, I reached out to Chad first and asked if they have something similar that I can try before I go for the algae bomb version. So Chad pointed me to their product Phyto Feast Live. Now in the past I've used their Phyto Feast a lot, really love it. This particular version is live, contains 20 different phytoplankton strands and is really, really concentrated. He recommended to me, say, why don't you give this a try and let me know what you think. This, my friend, is what I'm looking for, Phyto Feast Live. All the ones I've tried before are just standard Phyto Feast, but these guys are the live stuff, interesting. Those of you who are taking notes and comparing, it looks like it's six species in five classes, and we got different types of algae right here. And let's flip to the other side. We do see the different species as used in this uh, Phyto Feast right here. Among the things that Chad sent me includes uh, two bottles of these Apex pots. Uh, a couple months ago, I did seed this tank and the mangrove tank with some Apex pots, but I kind of want to reinforce the population a little bit. But however, I feel like stuff like copa pots, it's just going to help with the biodiversity as well as our uh, amphipods population. On the sixth day of dino, my test kit gave to me. I think we hit our targets. Let's see here. Roughly 12 or maybe a little bit beyond. This is 25 right here. So that's a, that's a big jump with not too much shade in the color. I'll maybe even call it 15. Nitrate, I know I said that I was trying to target 10, but after talking to Daniel a little bit more, he said even like pushed it to 15 or 20, and it should be okay. So I think we should be good. Uh, I'll call this 15. And today's phosphate value, we're at looking at 0.2. I may run a little bit of GFO, I have it all hooked up, uh, just to bring it down to maybe like 0.15-ish. I feel a little bit more comfortable, slightly lower. But for the most part, um, supposed to not worry too much about the phosphate until the nitrate is up, but Again, nitrate is up today, which I'm really happy about. So I'll bring it down slowly. I'll bring it down a little bit, maybe run the GFO for a couple hours, not the whole day. All right, so the main thing I wanna try for this round of Dino Battle has come in. 
Uh, this is Sponge XL. Essentially, it is silica. In my search of specifically battling amphidelium dinoflagellans, I came across a reef to reef thread. Uh, it's long, it's almost 100 pages long, and there's a lot of people sharing experience on how to beat this specific type of dino. Again, there are different types of dinos, uh, different types of dinos have different types of treatment. For example, the more toxic type of dinoflagellant actually goes into water column at night. Uh, that's why UV would be really effective when you're battling that type of dino. It's also really toxic, so that may be a easier one to treat, but also more toxic for the tank inhabitants. The type of dino that I have, Amphidelium, seems to be not as toxic. It's a really little toxin, but they do hug the sand, meaning that at night they actually go into the sand, not in the water column. So UV for the most part is not effective. One of the more recently popular uh, treatment methods for this type of dinoflagellant that's on the sand seems to be dosing silica. What that does is that it's going to encourage a diatom bloom, which will in turn outpace the dino growth and outcompete them. Afterwards, you can just kind of deal with the diatom by adding cold pods and cleanup crew, which is much easier to do uh, than dealing with dinoflagellant. And that is the reason why I'm uh, dosing silica. There, there seems to be two products that I recommend it. Number one, I have the Sponge XL from Brightwell in my hand right now. This is a Chrome specific product. The other one is called Water Glass that has been recommended by uh, Randy on Reef to Reef. If you don't know Randy, he's like the chemistry expert, a guru uh, on Reef to Reef. And a lot of people swear by what he says. Because I could get the Sponge XL a lot faster from Amazon, I went ahead and do that. Uh, Water Glass seems to be a lot cheaper. So um, if I find that I'm running out of silica, and I'm like a week out or something like that, I'll probably order a uh, water glass for my next go around. I've already dosed the recommended uh, dosage amount to start off, which is one drop per 20 gallon. I ordered a silica test kit and it is not cheap. It's like $50 from Hannah Checker. Sulifurs also make a silica test kit, but the review is really mixed. A lot of people say it's essentially useless. It does not detect any silica even when dropping a sponge excel directly into the water that uh, the test kit test. So just to make sure that I'm testing for what I'm dosing, I went ahead and got a henna because across the board, everybody said that the uh, henna checker is top. In the past, I have beat dino by going with like blackouts as well as hydrogen peroxide dosing. But since uh, silica dosing is kind of like the new kit on the block, I want to try it out, especially since I know specifically people uh, use this to deal with the type of dino I have. So uh, this will be a new experience for me and I'll document it here. Again, this is not an instructional video. This is just documenting uh, what may work or does not work for me. So please don't use this as an instructional video, but use this as just a single data point. One week later. Tonight, Emily got the night off, so I got Leon and tonight I'm also gonna do some last minute maintenance on this tank before we go into a possible five days blackout let me show you what we're dealing with as almost like a time capsule so we can kind of refer back and see what's happening we are in full-blown dino flagellants disaster just look at the sand bed right here we got nice rusty brown color so this is the amphidinium uh, dinoflagellant i hope i'm pronouncing it right so this type of dinoflagellant mostly stay on the sand bed as you can see i also have a little bit of cyanobacteria coming in and that is supposedly from the die-offs that i'm having from the system imbalance the dinoflagellant and this type of cyanobacteria sometimes come in hand to hand and that's the case for me here so in terms of casualty fish wise totally okay my shrimps in here some Somewhere as well. Uh, inverts, snails, I find a lot of snails kind of turn upside down like this. Sometimes when I put them back on the rock, they stick on the rock and stop moving around so they seem okay. But more than half times, the snail that got upturned, they're done for. So chances are those snails consume some of these uh, dino on the sand bed. Granted, this kind of dino is not the most toxic type, but they still have some toxic toxicity. In terms of casualty among corals, I think the dino really just wrecked my euphilias. I lost the octospawn. I lost the um, the foreheads uh, frog spawn. That has not been doing well for a while. Interestingly enough, this hammer is actually bouncing back in a really nice way. I'm getting the parameters back in check. Elevated the nitrate. To about 15 at this point. Pull the phosphate back down to about 0.15 at this point. So I feel like we're good. Alkalinity has been holding really, really steady thanks to the Alcatronic. And that's why you see that the uh, Space Invader Pactinia has not receded among all these crazy things. Usually when the Elk Swing goes, Space Invader first to go, but no problem there. Today is like day 11 or 12, and it looks like the nitrate actually dipped a little bit, sitting at probably, uh, say, maybe 10 ppm. It was about 15-ish before, so I'll dose nitrate again. So phosphate is sitting at 0.15, which is within range. That is fine. Again, I'm targeting 0.1 to 0.15 at the moment. So in terms of water parameters, when battling dino, I think I am still in the proper range. So we're good. So we're carrying on, trying to burn it out. Since I've pretty much depleted my uh, Fish of Hex NO3, as well as the Microbat 7, I went ahead and placed an order in Marine Depot, and they just arrived today. Um, of course, 
I went for like the bigger bottles, uh, so that will last me a little bit longer. The other item that I placed in this order is kind of curious, is this guy right here. This is Reef Enhanced from Reef Brights, the light maker. Now, Daniel from New York highly recommend this product. And since he has been giving me some pretty solid advice up to this point, I figure, all right, I'm gonna trust you, let's try this out. Without even opening this, one thing that I'm not a huge fan of is they actually use the uh, label to seal the container. Meaning that if I wanna open this container, I have to slice this, slice this label, which I'm not a big fan of, but it is what it is. For those of you who are curious what this is, um, I think it may be best if you guys kind of go online, do a quick search of this to get the uh, full explanation. From what I understand, these are like marine microbes, kind of like dried out format, so I'm not paying for like liquid form where I'm essentially paying for water. So it's a lot cheaper. Yay! Open this up and see what's going on in here. What the? All right, let's see what's going on in here. So, what? Okay. Oh my God, come on. I guess I was expecting something like pile up lab. You open up, you just get the, what? Is there a hole here? What's going on? Man, dude, there's a hole. All right, I guess, yeah, there's a hole right here. I don't think I razor the back when I try to open it because as I razor it, it'll be caught right here. Basically, this is like a dry form of the uh, spores of microbes that will um, basically add biodiversity into your tank if I want to just really sum it up. Normally, I really stick to tried and true products, um, not too adventurous, uh, especially for uh, specialty products. But since this product came up, uh, pretty highly recommended from Daniel, and he has not stared me wrong yet. Um, so I figured I would give it a go. I added six scoops to the uh, tank water. I'm gonna let it sit. We'll stir in 10 minutes, and after about 25 minutes or so, to let it get a chance to kind of get mixed up with the water, I'm gonna release it into the tank. I'll be doing this about three times a week, or as needed. I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> so, so I'll just go with like three times a week just to kind of see. I think at this point, I'm trying to just boost biodiversity and I feel like this kind of product may be right down the alley if it works just as clean. But the problem is like, I don't know whether it's working or not or something else is working. It's really hard to quantify. Three days later. Hey, what's up reefers? This is interesting. This is now what they... 12 or 13, I am losing track, dude. But check this out. Well, actually, you probably cannot see it. But there is an absolutely population explosion of copepods on the front glass. And I did not even see this like yesterday. I think like dosing the uh, Reef Nutrition copepods definitely have something to do with this. But um, I am impressed. I'm surprised actually the amount of copepods I found on the front glass is insane. Uh, the population must have been brewing at some point because right now just, they're just covered the whole glass, all glass size, which is good because like, I feel like if there's, oh, what is this? Is this hair OG I see? That's amazing, dude. I want these. I want diatom, I want hair algae, I want every kind of algae out there that is not dinoflagellant. So this is really promising to see actually. This little strands of hair algae, it's uh, it's kind of, yeah. Okay, I'll tell you this. Like I've been debating uh, when to kind of pull the plug on the whole diatom silica dosing experiment and just do a blackout and just kind of reset the tank. But seeing hair algae, seeing copepod explosion, which probably means that there's something for them to eat. The copepod is not gonna eat the dinoflagellants because they're mildly toxic, at least this type is. Um, so that means that there must be some kind of diatom explosions or uh, other kind of algae coming out. So this is fantastic. Again, I don't think, you can, I, can you actually see this? Let me bring it to the black part of the tank. I'm not sure if you can see the glass, but you have a lot of copepod just kind of running around in glass, and this is new. And light is at the end of the tunnel. I see hair algae coming in, uh, these little threads, especially this little chunk, complex algae, which is fantastic. Leon, we are doing it, yeah. I can't wait, I guess we just gotta wait it out. Um, I'm hoping that we have an excellent, excellent green algae or diatom bloom before the end of the week. Right now is Wednesday. This way at least I can uh, capture it on video and share the news. So you guys know which direction this battle with dinoflagellant is going. Yeah. The next morning. This morning I see something really encouraging is actually the snail uh, eating up these uh, film algae. Probably diatom of some sort. Wait, let me see, is it hair algae? It does not look like dinoflagellant at all. So this is excellent. So this is exactly what we want. We want regular algae that the cleanup crew can consume without dying to really outcompete the dinoflagellants. And then we want the cleanup crew to clean up that kind of algae to keep everything in check. So that is happening here. Uh, sand bed looks pretty good. But again, this is in the morning. I think like once the light comes on, all the dinos start popping out. Hey guys, so one other thing that I'm also doing using a one micron filter sock to kind of catch any of the dinoflagellants in case they kind of blow off the rock 
or if they die, they'll float in the water column, uh, it'll get caught in the sock. Then I recommend me using the one micron socks because it is fine enough to catch a dino. So the goal is not to disturb the sand bed at all, but rather if things appear on the corals, on rock, I can siphon them out through the filter sock and put the water back into the sump. So far, I've not done it yet. Basically, I just put the filter sock in the return chamber so as the water flows through, it'll just catch any of the stuff. So I have two filter sock holders. I'm only doing it on one side. The other side, I still have carbon in there. The one micron sock got clogged up really, really quickly as expected. It's basically one and a half days and then it is completely full of water overflowing. To clean it out, I rinse it out first and then I drop it in the washing machine and add a little bit of bleach. And once we uh, dry air dry it out, make sure air dry not to uh, machine dry, it should be okay. But uh, nobody tells Emily I'm using the washing machine to wash filter sock. She's gonna kill me. Two days later. Now is week three, or maybe it's three and a half. I'm kind of losing track at this time, but basically every single morning I come down here downstairs in my fish table, I guess. I do nitrate tests, I do phosphate tests, and today probably about 17, I'll say in between the two color. Yeah, I'll say 17, which is good, it's a good range. And we're sitting pretty at 0.14. I'm still trying to slowly lower this to 0.1. So I'm running a little GFO through my uh, little desktop media reactor from Innovative Marine. Um, yesterday I ran it a whole day and I think it's staying constant, if not dropped by 0.01. Um, so I think it's fine, we'll keep it here first. I just finished doing all the tests, clean things up. Decided to turn on the white light and do some maintenance in the tank. As you can see, during the day, the sand bed looks perfectly clean, except for that little spot right there. Those are cyanobacteria, and these are the new uh, film algae that's coming in. Not quite sure what exactly it is, but I'm happy to see algae other than uh, dinoflagellates. Interesting thing with this type of amphidinium uh, dino algae is that during uh, the light out period, I just turned the light on, that's why it's, uh, uh, the light is on. Uh, during the light out period, the dino actually goes under the sand, as you can see here. No dinos, all perfectly white sand, except for that little dusting right there. Uh, that could be due to too much dino density where they cannot even go in the sand to stay at the top or those could be diatom which I'm hoping for um, but as you can see tank is super clean <laughs> the tank is super clean when the light is out after a light comes on really quickly you see all the dino kind of surface again so one really effective treatment against this type of dino is also removing the sand bed because they, they're sand drillers but of course uh, I don't want to remove sand bed I like the look of sand and I feel like uh, my sand bed hosts a lot of beneficial bacteria as well. So I absolutely do not want to do that. And that is why we're going with the dirty method of trying to encourage uh, algae growth like this to outcompete uh, the dinoflagellates for uh, real estates. So in the beginning of the video, you saw that I used this microscope that gives me 200 magnification, which is strong enough, I think, to really kind of get an overlook of uh, what you're dealing with. But after seeing things under this microscope, I want to go even closer because they are just so intriguing. I spent a couple more bucks and I get this guy right here. I think this is about $85 or $90. This allows me to get much closer. I'm able to get to like 400 magnification or all the way up to 800 uh, on the website. On Amazon, it claims I can actually do 1600 or something crazy but uh, I haven't really looked into it. I just basically step on the uh, 10X eyepiece and rotate the barrel to like 40X, so that goes to 400. I just look under the microscope. All right guys, here we go. 400 magnification that makes your skin crawl a little bit because there are a lot of little things that's kind of moving and you're like, what's going on? But uh, oh boy, here we go. Here, here are the active ones. These are the guys I'm looking for. The party, the party, life of the party. What's that little guy up top? can't really see what's going on up there. It's almost like a tiny, tiny, tiny little copepod of some sort. I don't know. Is copepod even this small? And the picture is much more clear and I'm much more confident in terms of IDing the type of dinoflagellates that I have in my tank. During this turbulence time, look at this. One of my Lytel amphias actually transitioned to a male. Look at this guy right there. It's gorgeous, right? So these are the uh, female. All three of them I got from the reefer spot. They used to be really shy, but now they're always out and about. Of course, right now, again, I turn on the light abruptly, so they kind of like what's going on. He also became really, really mean. Uh, some of my fish actually had torn fin. Like, look at that. It's healing right now. But I think like earlier this week, they have torn fins, like they have like roughed up scuff marks and uh, <laughs> the, the male light, light tail empty is just like in everybody's face, kind of beating people down. Look at the female, female clowns. Like the back fins, there's like a really long torn fin all the way to the body. But it's healing now, it's closing up, which is good. But uh, I've never seen aggression like this in this tank. And everybody was just getting roughed up and this male was getting in everybody's face. I think it may actually help with the green chromis because uh, without other tank mates bullying them, 
the green chromis tend to pick among each other and eventually uh, you get like one or two left. So uh, this male right here may be able to keep like, keep, like green chromis in check uh, on guard. And here's my Halloween crap was do been doing fantastic uh, among the outbreak of dinos. So at the beginning of the dino outbreak, I thought it was diatom. So I added some more uh, tiger sand conch thinking that, oh, it's gonna take care of it, no problem. And then I think it's probably due to the dino. Even though they're not that toxic, they still have a little toxicity. So they ate them and unfortunately perished, but the hermit just kind of swooped in and took over their home. Interesting thing is that this guy is gonna do a lap or two around the whole tank and then a switch shell and then go again and switch shell again. So I, I don't know what he's doing, man. He just like leaves living in a different different home. You get the idea. All right, Reefers, now we have about the three and a half, almost four weeks mark. And uh, my wife's about to hang herself. That's why she's saying it's <laughs> up. One quick look at the tank. It shows that, yes, I still have dino flagellates all over the sand bed, but at the same time, we also have film algae developing on the glass, like I mentioned a little bit earlier in the video as well. And it seems like more and more of those are kicking in. And I swear, I think I'm seeing a little bit less dinoflagellates. It may be wishful thinking, but I really feel that way. I think we're on the right track. I am going to keep on doing what I'm doing, which is to keep nitrate around 10 to 15 ppm, keep phosphate at about 0.15. I'll try to bring it down to 0.1. Silica, I am kind of like, uh, slowly tapering it off. I feel like I have enough silicas in here. I might still do some maintenance dose in there to keep the level up to continue encouraging the diatom blooms. Outside of that, I'm still running activated carbon. I switch it out every week. I am using a one micron filter sock that I need to change out every day and a half. Uh, once in a while, I do run UV and I have the green killing machine, but that is kind of like on and off. I wouldn't call it running consistently. That's kind of like maintenance. I'm not sure if it helps or not, but for stuff that I'm sure seems to be helping is raising nitrate, uh, maintaining phosphate, and dosing silica. I think those are the big three, um, as well as dosing bacteria. In my case, I'm doing Microbac 7, but uh, Fritz Turbo Start uh, comes highly recommended as well by Daniel. And I'm also dosing phytoplankton. I'm using the Reef Nutrition Phytofeeds Live. Um, again, the uh, algae bond, Ocean Magic, is also highly recommended as well. So you pick your poison. I am cautiously optimistic within the next three or four weeks, I feel like we should have dino beads. I think we're on, I really, really do think that we're on the right track. Now, of course, once again, I have to mention that do not use this video as an instructional guide on how to beat dino flagellant, namely the amphidinium variety. But use it as one single data point on how I'm tackling this problem. And you can track this progress. Two or three weeks down the road, look at my video, see if I beat dino. If so, come back to this video and be like, okay, this works for him. Let's see if this works for me as well. But in three to four weeks, if you see that I'm still struggling with dino flagellates, well, there are a lot of great resources out there. Don't really look at this one as one of your data points, maybe. But I really feel good about it. I think we can beat this. We've done it before. We've done it two, three times in the past, and we can do it again to kick out the 2020 bad luck. Let's do it. Yeah, give me five. I say, yeah, give me five. <laughs> I say, yeah, give me five. <laughs> I say, yeah, give me yeah, five. Yeah. Yeah! 21 d we got you covered. Dino Flagellus, we got you covered. Let's do this. Yeah. Done.